Hi all, it's uh, time for another edition of uh, Build the Manium Falcon. This is issue number 65. Uh, I've got four have just arrived, so um, looks like we're doing a bit more of the uh, hull plating and framework, and um, and then it looks like we're going to get onto some of the upper hull, which will be fun. So uh, I'll get this all opened up, get set up, and uh, we'll see what we're doing this time. Okay, for um, the first issue then, so we're really just finishing off the last of the framework. Um, so there's not going to be too much to show. It looks like it's going to be just this section in here we're just going to complete. Um, and uh, as soon as that's done, looks like we're going to get onto some of the uh, the plating, which I find more interesting, I must admit. So I'm going to crack on with this. There's probably not too much to show you for this, this piece. So I'll uh, come back when uh, we get onto the next stage. Okay, um, <clears throat> well at the end of stage 65, really there wasn't too much to show you. It's just putting in the last couple of pieces, which is um, the 39 and 40, which have gone into here. So you've got piece 40 there and 39. And that pretty much concludes the upper hull framework. Um, there wasn't really much to show you. It's just the same we've been doing time and time again now for several weeks building this um, upper hull but now hopefully we're going to get into something a little bit more interesting once we get the, uh, some of the hull plating on we can look at sort of painting and uh, maybe some of the I'm going to do some additional lighting uh, inside so I'm looking forward to getting onto that soon because we've had a lot of this frame building stuff so so um, so that's it for 65 so let's crack on I'm going to go and grab the next issue and just, just uh, get straight on with it Okay, on with uh, issue number 66. So it looks like we're doing some of the, uh, one of the recessed panels on the upper hull. There we go. Uh, and then, uh, and then, yeah, we're getting onto some hull after that. That looks like the, um, the end of the, uh, the engine at the back there. So, um, all right, let's crack on. Okay, well, I sort of expected that things would change a bit after we've got the, uh, the frame complete. And uh, that's pretty much what we've got. We've got big changes. So we're now being told really to, to assemble all the pieces that we've been collecting over the last few uh, issues, which is effectively the, the top plating. Um, and they're talking about assembling it. Now, as most of you will know already, if you've been watching this series from the beginning, I've been light blocking the hull as a go. So I'm not going to build this up to this stage yet because what I want to do is I want to paint the inside of all of these. So although I've shown you before, um, for anyone who hasn't seen, I'll show you how I'm going to light block the hull because I'm putting some additional lighting in. Um, if you've seen the painting before, obviously just skip through, I apologise. Um, but this is really just for anyone who hasn't seen any. I'm just going to take advantage of the nice weather out there and um, get this all sprayed up outside. Basically I'm just going to mask off the top surface because I don't want that coloured at the moment. I'm still deliberating whether or not to actually paint that. Obviously I'm going to do a lot of weathering and additional painting but I'm not sure whether to actually change the base coat or not. I'm still considering that. Um, but certainly the inside needs light blocking so I'm just going to mask off the outside, prime the inside and then coat it with a, a, a very reflective uh, silver spray so that any light inside is, is bounced back inside and doesn't seep through the plastic. Um, but I'll show you more uh, once I'm all set up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, apart from bringing my cup of coffee over, is start masking these panels up. And as I said earlier, I'm not going to paint the outside just yet until I decide what I'm going to do for the final for the final coat. So, all I want to do is just protect the outside from any overspray. It's not terribly onerous to do this. Just get some tape on the outside. And then all I'm going to do is just lay them all down, upside down on a bench outside. And that's all we need to do really. I'm just protecting the outside for now. I just don't want any overspray going through. Uh, and then this way I can protect the outside. I mean, if you're going to paint the outside of your hull anyway, then this doesn't really matter so much because what you do is you paint the inside, prime it, and light block it with your silver paint, and then you can um, spray your 
your outside because then it doesn't matter if there's any overspray goes onto the inside. Um, but the other way around, of course, you don't want spray paint from the inside getting onto the outside because it's going to be bright silver. So that's all I'm doing. I won't. I don't expect you to watch all of this, so I'm just going to uh, just do a few, and then I'll stop the camera, and I'll go and pick up shooting again when I'm ready to spray. Um, these have all been cleaned. It's a good idea to uh, run the parts under some soapy water, and then let them dry. That gets rid of any mold agent, mold release that's on them, uh, so that your paint's going to stick. Sometimes I forget. If truth be told, but um, that's all there is to it. We're really just protecting the outside for now. Some of them are easier than others because of the shapes. This is um, quite wide painter's tape. You don't need expensive masking tape for something this generic. Um, the Tamiya tape, for example, is very, very much better, much more accurate than this. So you'd save that for the, four, the sort of more fiddly, finer bits. Um, this is just literally just to stop it getting on the outside. Um, so that's the idea. So um, hopefully you can see what I'm getting to there. I'll, I'm probably going to run out of space soon, so I'll do a few, and then I'll probably do this in two or three batches. So anyway, I'll stop rolling for now before I bore you to tears, and uh, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, um, this is how I've just got everything masked off. I'm just going to get that ready for priming and painting. Um, as I say, you just need to just cover the exterior just so you don't get any overspray. The flat ones are nice and easy to do. Things like that are a little bit more difficult because you're trying to get the tape to stay to the shape of the part, which isn't always easy. So that one might have a... I'll spend a little bit more time on that one, but the others are, are, are relatively simple. So. Um, so that's it, I'll show you the results in a minute. Okay, um, so that's now done. So these are all the panels that I've just taken out uh, and they've all been sprayed silver on the inside so that they, they block the light now, no light seeps through. So when we add lights later on, the light will just shine where we want it and not glow through the plastic where we don't want it, which is always the thing that can make a, a model look like a toy rather than a, a model. Um, so uh, there we go, so yeah, they're all done. I just used the acrylic paints, the humble paints or the Tamiya paints. Um, being acrylic, they dry really, really quickly, which is really good. Um, and the masking tapes kept it pretty much off everywhere I needed and wanted. There's a little bit got on the edge of this, just there, I don't know if you can see, but um, it's not bad. And this is all gonna get weathered up because that's the base for the, an or for the, uh, for the antenna. So um, that's not so bad. So that's that bit done, so now we can start assembling um, and we're going to start putting the uh, the framework sorry the uh, the plating on the framework so uh, I'll make a start on that and I'll give you a progress update as we go okay so here I'm just um, following the instructions literally one stage at a time just fitting these panels as we go now that they overlap and underlap so it, it, I remember this from the, uh, the lower half, from the bottom of the hull. Um, it's important to put them in the right way around because obviously the, the earlier ones, the one you're on underlaps and then the next one overlaps. And obviously you can't put them on the wrong way around. Um, so I found that out to my cost by being impatient right at the start. And, um, you end up having to take a load of them back off again so that you can put them on in the right order. Let me just bring the camera around a little bit. I don't know if you could see all of that. Okay, right then. So that's TP01, which overlaps TP02. Right, make sure all those are okay. TP17, which I've just seen, which is here. Um, where's that going? These are the two corridors we're doing. Yeah. These use the little self-tapping screws with the crosshead of the flange. Probably be a bit boring for you this. I'll uh, I'll probably speed this up later on when I edit it. So you don't have 
to watch all this real time. Don't over tighten these because you'll just strip the plastic and then it will be loose. It's also a good idea not to put them on and take them off too many times. I made that mistake earlier on as well. And some of the screws don't feel like they're holding very strong as a result. Okay, TP17, make sure that's okay. TP18, which is the top of the corridor. Is that one there?
Okay, so <clears throat> I've skipped some of the boring stuff for you, but basically that's that's where we're up to. If we do it that way, so it's facing you. Uh, that's basically what we've got. So that's the top half coming on now. So obviously this is where the, the antenna is going to go, cockpit, passenger tube, etc. Uh, so that brings us pretty much to the end of this issue, which is issue 66. I don't think there's anything more on there, so we're just going to carry on straight on to the next episode, episode, issue even. Um, a bit more, it looks like we're doing the whole plating for the back here, so I'll be back in just a mo. Okay, time for issue 67, and um, we've just got some nicely recognisable bits of hole plating. We've even got some of the coloured panels this time, which will be interesting because I did a little bit of um, <coughs> test painting much, much earlier in the series and uh, trying to get that sort of red oxide like primer, sort of red oxide primer like paint colour. If everyone remember from, uh, from painting cars, if you ever did that, I did that when I was a teenager, my first old banger. Um, so using that paint and it looks very very much like um, like that if I can just show the camera so so anyway okay so let's crack on let's see what we're doing I think it's probably fairly self-explanatory but we better check because I've been wrong before yeah okay that's pretty simple really three part, oh yes, and we're going to be assembling some of the smaller bits that we've had in the last couple of issues, so in fact we're not even putting that, ah, we're not even putting those bits of whole plating on yet, so it's uh, sub-assembly time, so I'm just going to get cleared away for that, and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, so we're on issue 67, and this is one of the recessed areas that we're going to um, build up, so it's pretty much uh, straightforward just follow the instructions just bits off of uh, off of the sprues so same as usual I'm just using the um, super glue I'm using uh, the cocktail sticks to put it on so I don't get glue everywhere and that's pretty much it I'm just following following the old instructions so I'll carry on uh, you probably don't need to see all of the different bits and pieces because uh, it's fairly self-explanatory and fairly well explained in the book uh, but if there's any issues I will make a point of um, letting you know so you got the heads up. Okay, that's that piece done. So this is um, the assembly of the equipment recess on stage 67. It's pretty straightforward, just follow the instructions. Um, and I think that's going to complete, yeah, that does, that completes issue 67. Sorry about the noise, there's a helicopter going overhead. Uh, right, so uh, I'm gonna make a, a move and get straight on with issue number 68, back shortly. Okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> but if you 68, that makes the last of uh, the four that I'm currently working on. So, um, looks like more of the whole plating. So, uh, it's going to be fairly quick, I think, but let's get it open and, uh, and see what we're doing. Okay, so that takes us to the end of issue 68. Uh, it's fairly simple construction, really. We've just got the, uh, the four parts. This is the, uh, the, the top. Uh, of the engine section where the six big exhausts are going to be or intakes probably how they are, I don't know uh, and, and really it's just these uh, linkages that are going in uh, the only thing to be aware of is uh, I started using the the little screws that we fit we normally fit the plating to the um, superstructure with those ones and I found out that was wrong and you need to use those ones, which are, there's about 18 that come specially for this. So 6, 12, 18, yeah. So, um, so that's the only thing really I got caught out on, was just uh, not noticing that we use the different screws for that. Um, and that's it. Issue 68 complete. So I'm just going to go and put this, I know we probably shouldn't yet, but I'm just going to offer it up on here and see what it looks like because they do seem not, well they don't tell us to do it yet but I'm you know me by now I'm a bit impatient oh there we go look at that right my phone's going so I better go and uh, do some work I'll um, catch up with you next time thanks for watching bye